everyone and welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. In today's tutorial we're going to do a really quick fun project. You've already seen this project once before but we're going to tweak it just a little bit. Today we're going to make a quilt cotton spice rack. So if you haven't seen this before and you're like what on earth is a spice rack? Um, this is a, a pattern that I came up with specifically to hold my Kindle. Uh, my Kindle, I like to read a lot of romance books, which can be a little spicy. And so my good friend Gabby over at Wonderground Fabrics suggested that we name it the Spice Rack. So let me walk you through it real quick. So once we open this up, you see on the side over here, we have a clear pocket. So even though it is the quilt cotton version, we are still gonna be using some vinyl. We are gonna still be using like cork or, cork or vinyl, faux leather, whatever you'd like. So this has a clear pocket right here. And you can see on the top here, I have a little binding strip. You could use quilt cotton for that, or you could use like a faux leather or cork. And then when we open this up as well, in the center here, we have the slip pocket in the middle. This is where I like to put the Kindle. And then over on the other side over here, we have a zipper pocket and a slip pocket. So lots and lots of pockets. We have a pen loop right here. And then again, another little accent of cork or vinyl. The binding around the entire spice rack for this one is quilt cotton. And I do highly encourage you to do that, specifically making like a biased quilt cotton binding. I'm not gonna walk you through how to do that because I actually use a tutorial that I love and I'm gonna link it down below and I'm gonna link it up here. I just encourage you to go to follow that tutorial. I will give you the measurements down below of how wide I cut all my fabric and how I sew it, like the seam allowance and everything. But I do encourage you to go watch that video. And if you really love working with a biased quilt cotton binding, my advice to you is just have a day where you pick a bunch of different fabrics that you think would look great as binding and make a whole bunch. That's what I did. I made a whole bunch of biased quilt cotton bindings. So that way when I have a project, it calls for it. I don't have to like get out fabric and cut it and make it, you know, I already have them ready to go. So this is the quilt cotton version. You see, we've already done the vinyl version previously on the channel. They are very, very similar. There's not a whole lot of difference between making these. Um, you know, vinyl's great because it's easy to wipe down. Quilt cotton's great because it is very soft and it is an easier material to work with. If you're worried about your needle jamming or your needle getting broken because of seams that are too thick, then the quilt cotton version is the way to go. Uh, they're both wonderful and they both do require some sort of a stabilizer like fusible fleece, maybe decoupable light. With the quilt cotton version, I would definitely suggest fusible fleece. It gives it a really nice feel. You could also quilt this really nicely and have a nice quilting design. There's a lot you could do with this. You could use English paper piecing and piece together a whole pattern first and then put it together. So we have a lot of fun with these spice racks over here. I'll be honest, I have made probably a dozen of them so far and I have three more cut out ready to go. I mean, it's it's, re it's really neat. So if you'd like to see the tutorial for the vinyl version of this, I'll have it linked down below as well on top of the screen at some point. In the vinyl version, we do use like a water resistant canvas for the binding. Um, I do love that. There's a lot of different binding options out there. I would say out of everything, the binding bit is probably the hardest. And if you're looking for the easiest way to bind around these curves, it's gonna be quilt cotton. Quilt cotton is just gonna be the easiest way to stretch the material and not have to worry about any of it bunching up on itself. If you're new to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them in the comment section down below. I wanna, I wanna tell you guys too about my friend Amber. She put together a video over the spice rack and she does some amazing modifications. I have seen so many people do incredible modifications of this pattern from adding a handle to it, to a clear slip pocket on the back to put like stickers and stuff like that and patches. There are so many different variations of this. So I love that. I mean, that's, I'm not, I don't consider myself a pattern writer, pattern writer, but when I do come out with some sort of a quick pattern or something simple like this, the goal is always to keep it as simple as possible so that you can adapt it and make it your own in whatever way you'd like. So it brings me a lot of joy to see you guys make this and then change it so much. I love that. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, so for the quilt cotton version, you're gonna need a fat quarter of material for the exterior, a fat quarter of material for the lining main panel, and then a fat quarter of material for your contrast pockets. This is really fun to mix up with a lot of different prints and everything. Next, you're gonna need about a fat quarter of clear vinyl. This is for the ID window in the clear pocket. And then I would also suggest, I mean, scraps, honestly, but a fat quarter or just small cuts of vinyl or cork or some sort of raw edge material for binding. If you'd like to use that, you could use water resistant canvas for binding if you'd like. You could also use quilt cotton, lots of options here, but I will be using just a vinyl for those pieces. 
We're also going to be using about a yard of woven interfacing since we're using woven material. And then you're going to need a fat quarter of fusible fleece. And this is just going to be to provide a little bit of extra support to the spice rack. You could use Decoville Light if you'd like. You could use foam. There's a lot. You could use any type of stabilizer you'd like. Um, if you're going to be putting some sort of an electronic in it or something that's breakable, something cushiony is going to be helpful. Okay, so the only hardware you really need for this is a zipper um, and then snaps. So you can use cam snaps, like plastic snaps, or you can use metal fashion snaps. You can use magnetic snaps if you'd like, whatever snaps you're comfortable working with. Uh, there are some optional tools to help you with this. In the pattern, you do have printable templates, so you do not need any of these acrylic templates at all if you have the pattern printed. But if you were going to be making a few of these or you just want to make it a little bit easier, these templates do make it much easier. So we have the full set for the spice rack, which is just all of the templates and they are all already rounded. I'm gonna show you kind of how to use those when you're planning out your design. Another option, if you wanna do the ID window, is the ID window templates. These are sold individually as vertical or horizontal. They are also available as their own separate digital download if you'd like. And then a third option is the rounded corner template. So if you were just using the pattern or you were just using rectangles, but you wanted to round the corners with an acrylic template, the rounded corner template is good for that. It's kind of a multi-purpose tool and it has a one, two, three, and four inch rounded corners on it. And don't forget with your snaps, you're gonna need two sets, so two males and two females, so each set comes with two pieces. So you need a total of eight pieces total. Okay, so here's a bunch of other stuff. As always, lots and lots of clips. With When it comes to binding the edges, you can make your own binding out of quill cotton, which is what I have here, or you can use a pre-made binding that you've purchased that's quill cotton, or you can use like a nylon binding, and this one is, has an adhesive on it. My two favorite options are the nylon with the adhesive or a pre-made binding. Um, I will link the video that I use down below to make this binding, and I'll put in there what size tool I'm using. The video I use explains this perfectly, so I, I'm not gonna show you how to make binding today uh, because they just do it better. You're also gonna need about a two to three inch piece of elastic. This is completely optional. It's just like a little pen loop. And then I have a one inch by six inch ruler. The thread I'll be using through my needle today is a Tex 35 weight thread. The thread in the bobbin is a Guterman 100 weight thread. The needle I'm using is a Microtex 8012. I have some double-sided tape, a washable, easy to sew over double-sided tape, nothing too sticky because you will be sewing over it a lot. For marking tools, I have a silver ink pen and an air erasing marker. Then I have my seam ripper and stiletto, and then a stiletto that I keep by my machine at all times. I have my bag tag, and then I have a hole punch and a rivet press, and this is going to be to set those fashion snaps. All right, so let's talk pattern pieces real quick. You have your main pattern piece, which is the main exterior and the main lining. Remember, these are gonna go wrong sides together like this. So try to kind of lay them out and envision how it's gonna look. They're gonna go together like this. The center is the back, and then they're going to wrap with the lining right side up, the right side comes over, and then the left side goes over like that. So this is where your image is going to be, your main image when it's closed. So if you have a preference, you're going to want to lay that out. So if you're like you're using the acrylic template, you're gonna actually take the acrylic template and lay it right side down. So it's if you have your exterior material right side up, and then this area over here is going to be the front of it, this is gonna be the back. Just something to think about, okay? You can also use this template to help you cut your fusible fleece cut. The template does have these little cutouts all around that are a little bit further in, and you can use those to trace out your fusible fleece and then cut it out. So you're gonna have one cut of fusible fleece that is smaller and then you have your exterior and your lining cuts. Next we have the contrasting fabric pocket cuts. You're gonna have two cuts of your material for the zip slip pocket front. So if you're worried about orientation, just make sure you think about that, just like this. And then you're gonna have two cuts of your contrasting material for the zip slip pocket back. And again, these are gonna go just like this. And then we'll have a piece of this that kind of rotates towards the front. And then we have our center slip pocket. Don't forget that this one is going to be folded in half. So all the pattern pieces kind of let you know, like, hey, this is where you're gonna see something. So think about that whenever you're cutting out your material, if you have pattern placement. All of these are quilt cotton and they all have woven interfacing already attached to them. All right, and finally we have our ending bits. So we have a clear pocket here. This is going to be for the clear pocket on the left side of the lining. And then we have a binding strip. You can use a piece of quilt cotton. You can use a piece of cork or vinyl. I have measurements for all of that in the pattern, depending on which one you want to use. Like I said, I'm going to use little cuts of vinyl and I'm just going to leave the raw edges. And then we have a binding cut that's going to go down the center of the lining. And this is also just a vinyl cut. And then I have my ID window 
ID window is completely optional, but I have my vinyl cut for the exterior frame of it, and then I have my clear vinyl for the inside, and I will show you how to build that. And it's been a minute since I've made one of these, but you also need a piece of fusible fleece for that slip pocket, especially if you're gonna be using it for a Kindle. If you're using a thicker material, or you're not gonna be using it for any sort of item that could be damaged if it hits something like a hard surface, um, then you can leave off the fusible fleece cap for that. So let's prepare with our interfacing. On the back side of the exterior main panel, we're going to center our fusible fleece. If you'd like to make it a little bit easier, you can grab your template or you can use the measurements that I provide in the pattern and just kind of make a few little marks just to help you know whereabouts the center it is. It doesn't have to be exactly precise. You just don't want it too close to one edge. So I'm just gonna take this using those marks and center my fusible fleece. And with fusible fleece, it's always best if you fuse it from the right side of your fabric. If you're using a cork or a vinyl, you can cover the back of this with a piece of quilt cotton and then try to fuse it. Um, or you could use glue. If you're using quilt cotton, then you can just flip this over, keeping everything in place, and then fuse it from the right side of the material. And it, it gets to the glue a lot better if you do it like that. All right, once you have the fusible fleece attached to the back of the main panel, you can set that to the side. Next, grab the center slip pocket and lay it wrong side up. And then grab your center slip pocket fusible fleece and you're going to attach it on the right side and it's gonna be 3 eighths of an inch away from the right edge and 3 eighths of an inch away from the top and bottom edges. Once you have that in there, once again, we're going to just flip this over so we're looking at the right side and we're gonna press from the right side. All right, once you have the fusible fleece attached, you can set this to the side. So let's work on our zip slip pocket. You'll notice that I already have all of my pieces rounded and in the pattern, they are still rectangles. So that is something, if it's easier for you to just cut the rectangles and then round everything in the end, go ahead and do that. If you're using templates and you wanna round everything in the beginning, you can do that as well, whatever is easiest for you. So the first thing you wanna do is grab your front zip slip pocket that you want to be the piece that you see, right? Cause you're gonna have a, a front slip slip pocket that's on the back of that. So make sure you have the one that is going to be the one you see in the end and lay that right side up and then grab your zipper. And with the zipper closing going up, so as the zipper closes, it goes up towards the top. We're gonna lay the zipper right side down and over the straight edge here on the left of our front zip slip pocket piece. Grab your clips and clip this in place. And now let's go to the sewing machine and using a zipper foot, let's just base this on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now, once you have that zipper basted in place, grab the other front zip slip pocket panel. This is going to be the back side of it. So like the lining side of the lining pocket. And you're gonna take that and lay it right side down over your zipper and clip along the same straight edge as the other front zip slip pocket panel. And now let's sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, once you have these both sewn on, what we wanna do now is we want to press them away from the zipper and wrong sides together. And since we're using quilt cotton, we can actually use an iron for it this time. <laughs> so what I like to do is get the zipper so that the zipper is right side up. The lining is just kind of, the back side of the pocket is just kind of laying down over here. The front side that you're gonna see is on top and I'm just gonna push my material so that the zipper and the material fold behind that front pocket and I will press along this edge first, just like that. And then I'll take the back panel and pull it down to meet the raw edges. And give a little tug along my zipper to flatten it out. And then I'll just press from the back here. So I'm pressing the back panel on the back side of the zipper and then flip it so that you have the pocket side that you're gonna see in the end facing right side up. You can give it one more press. There we go. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and just top stitch right along that seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now grab your back zip slip pocket piece and it's going to be the front one. So you have to think about it this way. When you're cutting out your material, if you have a preference, think about it. Um, if you don't care, then don't worry about when you cut out your material. But this one is going to go on the right side of the zipper and in the end, just like this strip right here is what's gonna be seen. It's, you gotta kind of visualize it. Look at the pictures in the pattern. I try to really lay it out for you so you can see that. So take that first piece the piece that's gonna have a 
print on the right side of it that you're gonna wanna see on the front of the pocket in the end. I am not explaining that well, am I? I'm doing my best, guys. So I'm gonna take that piece and I'm gonna lay it right side down on the right side of my zipper. And if your zipper extends beyond the pocket like mine does, just make sure that you center this other piece of material with the slip pocket that you already attached to the zipper. So line it up on the sides here. Don't line it up all the way on the bottom or top edge of the zipper. And just clip this together. And now let's baste along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that baste in place, flip this over so you're looking at the back of your zipper tape and take your remaining back zip slip lining pocket and lay it right side down so it's right side against the back side of the zipper tape. And then just line it up with that edge that you've already basted and clip together. And now let's sew along that clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. All right, we can once again grab our iron and we're just going to press both pieces of material away from the zipper so that they come wrong sides together. All right, so when you lay it flat like this, it should look just like this with the smaller side over here on the right, the larger side over here on the left. And now we're going to just baste along the side we just sewed at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now what you wanna do is take the larger side over here on the left and with both panels, you wanna flip them back so they meet up with the corners on the shorter side over here on the right. So if you wanna first go around and baste around all of this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to hold it in place, you can do that. I don't find that it's too much work to just pull them all together. So I just start with these corners here and then I'm going to clip the corners together and it doesn't matter if the corners are rounded or if they're just the regular rectangular corners. Just get them all, all four of them to line up and clip together. All right, and then once you get the raw edges done, you're gonna flatten this out so you have a little strip over here on the left side. So I'm gonna rotate this to make it a little bit easier with my iron, but I'm flattening this out and then I'm gonna grab my iron and I'm going to just press right along that little strip on the top of the zipper. Okay, now we can go to the sewing machine and we're going to just top stitch along that folded edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And you can go ahead and top stitch or base stitch around all the other edges as well at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold it all together. All right, and if you ever extended your zipper like I did, you can trim it down now. So just make sure it's all one size. If you have a rectangle, then the pattern does tell you exactly what size it should be. And there's your little zip slip pocket. Isn't that cute? So we can just set this to the side and we'll attach it in just a moment. Now grab your center slip pocket and I actually like to prep this first and then add the ID window. It's kind of backwards, but that's how I like to do it. So take your piece and lay it in half, wrong sides together, lining up the short edges. So the folded edge will be over here on the right and this will be the front of the pocket and the raw edges will be over here on the left. Once you have that folded, give it a good press. And now let's just go top stitch right along the folded edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so this is the pocket that I like to add all the extras to. I like to add my little ID window to this and I like to add my bag tag here as well. So let's prep this ID window and then we can add it to that pocket. So grab the ID frame and lay it wrong side up and then grab your double-sided tape. I like to use eighth of an inch wide double-sided tape. I'm gonna add double-sided tape right next to the window cutout on the back of my frame. So just all four edges of that window cut out. And do your best to make sure it's just right on the edge. Then you can go ahead and remove the paper from all four of them, or you could just remove paper one at a time. So like if I just removed the top piece, I could take my little clear piece here and still working on the back of the frame. I'm going to just put it over the paper pieces here and make sure it's centered just like that. And then I'll stick it down to that top piece where I already removed the paper tape. And then I can just lift this up and remove the paper from the other three pieces of tape one by one, just pressing it down. That way, if you're just a little cautious that you're gonna stick it down and it's not gonna be right, you just do it one at a time. And I wanted to mention that you can edge coat around the inner and outer edges of this ID pocket if you'd like first and then attach everything, it's totally up to you. I just leave it raw. So once I have this clear piece taped to that little window right there, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna top stitch right along this inner rectangle on the vinyl piece at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I like to start and stop at like a bottom corner and I leave the tails really long so I can tie them off after I'm done. So I'm gonna leave the tails really long at the beginning and the end. 
You can backstitch if you prefer instead. Okay, so you can see I have these long tails here. I'm just gonna flip this over looking at the back side. And then I'm gonna use a stiletto and I'm going to pull on one of the bobbin threads just slightly until I see some of that top thread coming out the back like a little loop. And then I'm gonna pull the top thread to the back. And then I'll do the same thing with the other bobbin thread, just getting all four threads on the back side here. And then once I have all four threads, nice and long, I'm just gonna divide them up two and two, and I'm gonna do three tight knots. And then once you have those knots done, you can cut down the thread. And you can put some fray check on this or a little bit of glue. This is a little risky, but I like to take a lighter and just very gently melt down the tails. If you get too close to the knot, you will melt the knot off and then you've completely, you kind of have to redo the whole thing. So try, try to be gentle with that. All right, next thing I like to do is flip this over. So we're looking at the wrong side again. And then grab your double-sided tape and grab a ruler and just measure down a half of an inch from the top edge and draw a horizontal line. And then grab some double-sided tape and add some double-sided tape right along the top straight edge of your little ID window. You can remove the paper from that and then fold down that top raw edge so that the top raw edge is meeting that line you just marked. It should overlap your clear vinyl a little bit. There we go. And now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch along this folded edge and I am going to back stitch at the beginning and the end of this. And even though I did back stitch, I do still like to bring those top threads to the back and knot them off on the beginning and the end of that stitching just for a little bit of extra reinforcement. Now we're gonna still stitch down these top corners to the pocket, so it's it's gonna have more, more support. Okay, your little ID window is all prepped and ready to be added. So once again, grab your double-sided tape, and this time we're gonna add double-sided tape to the sides and the bottom, right along the edge, once again. So I'm just gonna add it right on the back side of my ID window on both sides and the bottom. And then measure two and one quarter inch down from the top edge of the front of your slip pocket here, and then one inch over from the folded edge where you're top stitched, and then remove the paper from your ID window. Now this is just placement for me where I like it. You could put this ID window wherever you want. You could put it on the front of the zipper pocket. You could put it over on the clear pocket if you'd like. You can leave it off completely. You can put it on the exterior. It's kind of the fun thing about the spice rack pattern that I've seen a lot of people, um, a lot of people get really creative with it and, and completely change it around. I mean, add zippers, add handles, add clear pockets to the front. I love that. I love that. I love that this is something that, you know, you can make your own. So I have my lines marked here and I'm just gonna tuck this in so that the top edge lines up with that two and a quarter inch line. And then the right side lines up with that one inch line. And while I'm here, I'm also gonna grab the double-sided tape and add it to the back of my bag tag because I like my bag tag to go just right underneath that ID window. So I just put tape on the back of this and I'm just gonna center this on my ID window. So you can see I just centered it right underneath it. I'm just eyeballing it. If you wanna grab a ruler to make it more precise, go ahead and do that. There we go. Now, before we sew this on, the number one thing you gotta do is you gotta pull that back piece out. I leave it folded while I'm doing all this because it's easier to measure and everything, but before we sew it, you gotta move that back piece out of the way. You don't need to sew through both of them. It's not the end of the world if you do sew through both of them. You're not gonna see it, but it looks better if you don't. So now we're going to top stitch along the sides and the bottom of this ID window. So starting at one top corner, go around and end at the other top corner. I do suggest you back stitch at the beginning and the end. And then also I'm gonna top stitch around my bag tag, all of this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. How cute is that little pocket? It's so cute. Okay, if you wanna knot any of these threads on the back, go ahead and do that. I like to do it. I think it just, especially for the ID window, it provides just more support. Um, Cause I feel like this type of pocket right here is one that gets pulled on a lot more than other types of pockets and it's so stiff and tight, uh, the more support you can add to it, the better. So now if you'd like, you can go ahead and base the other three raw edges just to hold it all together. Just do this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, you can set this little cute pocket to the side. So next we're gonna do the clear pocket. So make sure you grab your clear pocket and your binding piece. And then also grab some double-sided tape. So on the back side of your little piece of binding, draw a midpoint line going down the center long lengthwise. And since this vinyl is a little strong, I'm gonna add double-sided tape along both long edges on the back side, just so I don't have to worry about it moving around on me when I top stitch it in place. 
Okay, so now remove one of the paper backings and lay your clear vinyl pocket right side up with your binding piece wrong side up. And the top straight edge of your clear vinyl pocket should match up or just lie right underneath to just below that middle mark line. And as you set this in place, you're just sticking it to that tape. So then remove the paper from the other piece of double-sided tape and wrap this around towards the front and stick in place. And if you'd also like to use clips, you can do that. Now I'm gonna to top stitch from the raw edge here on the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end. Isn't that fun little sparkly pocket? I love these. All right, you're done with the last pocket. So now it's time to start attaching everything. So grab your main lining panel and grab your clear pocket, your center slip pocket, and then your zip slip pocket. And everything just kind of lays in place. So let's start with the right side zipper pocket. You're just gonna line it up with the corners, whether they're rounded or they're rectangular corners, and then use your clips to clip these together. Next up, grab your clear pocket and line it up on the left bottom corner and clip together. And then the center slip pocket, you're gonna line up the raw edge over here on the left with the right raw edge of your clear pocket panel. So they should just meet up with one another. They don't overlap each other, they just meet up right with one another. All right, now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine. We're gonna baste around the outer edges of this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you're struggling with the clear vinyl, uh, make sure you grab a piece of tape and just put a little piece of tape right on the bottom of your presser foot as you go over this and it's gonna help a lot. You'll notice that I'll do that because um, my presser foot always sticks to clear vinyl. So just put it right underneath your presser foot and it will help prevent sticking. I just love all these colors. I know we're in like the Christmas season, but this is just, this is fun. I love these. Okay, so next grab your little piece of elastic if you're choosing to use it. And I like to add it just like right above the pocket. So I don't wanna have too much bulk. So I'll add it just above the pocket. I like this to be closer to two inches rather than three inches long. So that's just something to think about. And you can baste this in place if you'd like. Let's go ahead and do that. Normally I just tape it in place, but let's baste it in place. So I'm going to have it go right above the top of my clear pocket, folded in half, right side out, wrong sides together. And it's going to overlap the seam by about a quarter of an inch, just like this, okay? And I'm just gonna base this down. The folded edge is pointing towards the ID window. All right, there we go, we have that done. So now we're gonna grab our binding piece here. And what you see we're gonna do, we're just gonna lay this over those raw seams and over that piece of elastic, just centered over that and it's gonna cover all that up. So we're gonna to wanna to add some tape to this to hold it in place. You could use just one piece of quarter inch tape or you can use two long pieces of eighth of an inch long tape, which is what I'm gonna use because again, my vinyl is just a little bit firmer and I don't wanna fight it. So I'm just gonna add two pieces of my double-sided tape along the long edges and then I'm just gonna remove the paper from both sides here. And then we're just gonna center this over the raw edge of the clear vinyl and the raw edge of your center slip pocket. Try to keep it nice and straight. Position it however you want. If you need it a little bit more to the left or a little bit more to the right, as long as it's covering those raw edges, that's all that matters. It's covering the raw edges of the pockets and the raw edges of the elastic. Make sure you have enough elastic poking through. There we go. How cute is that? So now we're going to just top stitch along all four edges of this binding at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So this is supposed to be half of an inch wide. I'll be honest with you, I forgot to cut it down and it's three quarters of an inch wide. It's a little bit wider than I suggest. I'm interested to see how it is in the end. I don't think it will be a huge problem, um, but I did want to let you know that I did, shockingly, make a mistake even with my own pattern. <laughs> this is supposed to be half of an inch wide. So if it looks a little chunkier than yours, that's why. All right, you can set the lining to the side for just a moment. Okay, so now grab your exterior main panel and lay it right side up. And if you haven't rounded the corners, go ahead and round the corners either using the templates in the paper pattern or the template from the acrylic template or the one, two, three, four template. Just go ahead and round those corners out. And then grab whatever template you're using, either an acrylic template or the paper one, and you're gonna lay this so that the side that has the two dots, so one side of the template has one dot for rivet placement on the top and the bottom, and the other side has two dots. I don't know if you can see. So two dots on the top, two dots on the bottom. We want the two dots on the top and the bottom to be on the left-hand side. So if you have the acrylic template, you're gonna lay it right side down. And now we're gonna mark placement for the male end of the snaps. Now, like I have two dots here on the top and the bottom, 
if you want it a tighter fit, you're gonna be putting less things in it, then you're gonna want it closer in. So this inner dots here. If you feel like you're gonna put more items in it and it's gonna need more space, you're gonna want it closer towards the edge. So the dots over here on the left. I like to use the dots here on the left and these are two and a half inches in from the left edge. So I'm just gonna use those leftmost dots to mark placement for my snaps. And if you prefer not to use a template at all and just use a ruler, I do provide you measurements for exactly where those are. So now I'm gonna grab my hole punch and I'm gonna punch out the holes that I marked. So now grab your two sets for the male end of the snaps and also grab the die set for the male end. So that's the bottom one and that's the top one. And insert the die set for the male snaps into your rivet press. I'm using this little, I consider this a handheld rivet press. I'm using this because it's what I have out on my table right now. But if you prefer the standing rivet press, go ahead and use that. If that's easier for you, it doesn't matter which one you use. This is just here on my table, which is why I'm using it. So now grab the male end with the longer pokey bit, and that's gonna go from the back side up to the front. And then you're gonna grab the male end that's like a shorter, stockier bit, and you're gonna lay that right on top. And then you're just gonna line up your press with it and press in place. And repeat this for the other male snap on the bottom side over here. Okay, so once you have the male snaps attached, take your exterior piece and lay it wrong side up. So you're looking at the back side and the snaps are now on the right side. And then grab your lining panel and lay your lining panel right side up. And you're gonna take these two panels and lay them wrong sides together, lining up all edges in all corners. Then grab your clips and clip these together. All right, once you have them all clipped together, you can kind of give yourself a little, a little sneaky peeky of how it's gonna look. How cute is that? So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to the sewing machine and baste along all the edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Alrighty, so you can fold this. Look how cute this is looking. Isn't this so sweet? So now we need to install the female snap for the left side over here. So now you can just take your template or you can take measurements or ruler, whatever you'd like. Um, and just make sure you're working with the side over here with the single holes. And so it should be on the left if you're looking at the lining. So if you have the lining right side up, the single holes over here on the left. If you're working with the exterior right side up, you're gonna flip this upside down once again and you're gonna work with it over here on the right. So I like to look at it from the lining side and I'm just going to mark in those single holes and then I'm gonna grab my hole punch and I will punch those out and then grab your press and then the two sets for the remaining female ends and then the die set that goes with installing the female part of the fashion snap and then the flat cap goes on the front exterior so push that through the exterior just like that flip this over and then like the donut looking bit goes on the inside and then grab your press and just press this into place and repeat this with the other female snap. All right, now you can test it out. So the right side goes in, the left side goes over. Let's see how this looks. Oh my gosh, that looks so cute. And I don't think the three quarter, I mean, it would be better if this, cause this binding over here is so firm, it would be better if it was half of an inch. But I think especially once I put stuff in it, it, it it's gonna work out great. This is so cute. Look at my little puppy over here. All right, the last thing we have to do is attach binding. So here's the thing, let me just tell you, I hate making binding. Binding takes a while. So when I'm making one project, I don't like to also make binding. What I did was instead, the video that I've linked down below and I'll link up over here in the top corner, um, I used that to make a bunch of binding. So I've got a bunch of quilt cotton that I wasn't using for anything, but had a really good small print and I made a whole bunch of different bindings so that whenever I needed it, I had it and I had options and I made lots of different sizes as well. So I think I'm actually gonna use this binding instead just because it's also tulip pink. And since I'm using tulip pink for everything, might as well use that one. So I like to start on the bottom edge here. And when you take the quilt cotton binding, you're going to open up the binding and open up one fold at an edge and lay the fabric right side down against the right side of your lining and then just clip in place. And again, remember to open up that top bit there and clip in place. And the nice thing about quilt cotton binding, even though it takes more time to make, is that it stretches so nicely around these corners. You don't have to fight it in any way. I mean, it just, it just smoothly goes around these corners because it is a bias binding. 
meaning the weave of the fabric allows it to stretch the way we want it to stretch. You have to be careful, you don't want to overstretch it, but it does make it easier to use. All right, and then once you get back to the beginning, make sure your binding overhangs by at least an inch, and then you can trim it down. And I'm just going to include that in the clips so I have it all flattened out here. All right, now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew this on at about a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now, the seam allowance really depends on when you make your binding. If this fold right here is about a quarter of an inch away, then you would wanna do a quarter inch seam allowance. Whichever, whichever way lines up with the fold in your binding, go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna do it all the way around, back stitching at the beginning and the end. Once you have that sewn on, now what you do is just keeping the other edge folded, don't unfold the other edge, we're just gonna wrap this around the top of your material and pull it over so that it's covering the stitching you just made. And then use your clips to hold this in place. And leave the ending piece alone for now. We'll come back to that and I'll show you what to do with that. All right, once you get to the beginning and the end, look at the front side and you're gonna take the bottom piece here and you're just going to wrap it around the edge and clip in place. And then for the top edge that's still here, you're gonna fold that in on itself on a little 45 degree triangle, just like that, and then wrap it around so that it's tucking in all the raw edges. And wrap it around so that it completely covers the raw edge of the bottom as well. If you'd like to cut down the raw edge of the bottom a little bit so you don't have to worry about it poking through, you can. So you can see I completely unfold this, fold it in on itself at a 45 degree angle, and then refold down. And you can even wrap that bottom edge underneath the fold and then wrap it around the front if you'd like. Just whatever method you prefer. If you wanted to um, attach the beginning and the end of the binding like we do with quilts, you could do that. You could do that as well. Um, I'm just I'm kind of lazy, honestly. <laughs> okay, and I'll be honest, I probably should have used a quarter inch seam allowance with this specific binding. I think this binding was actually a little bit more narrow than I thought it was. Um, so that's something to think about. I should have probably used the quarter inch seam allowance. However, because it is a folded over binding for the areas where it's pretty thick and I can't quite get it to cover the stitching, I just unfold the binding a little bit. So instead of having it folded over like a quarter inch, I pull it up and just kind of roll it up a little bit so that it covers. And as long as the raw edges of the binding are still tucked in, they'll get caught when I top stitch. Another option is to always just trim down the seam underneath the binding a little bit so that it's easier to wrap. And that's the thing about the spice rack is that some of these edges are really thin and some of them are really thick and so you kind of have to be able to adapt. But once you have the binding all clips in place and ready to go, we're gonna top stitch around the edge, the folded edge here of the binding at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have it all top stitched, you can just close it up and take a look at your adorable little spice rack. Isn't that so stinking cute? And yeah, the quilt cotton binding is just, it's a lot easier to apply. Um, it would have been a lot easier if I would have used a quarter inch seam allowance instead of a three eighths inch seam allowance. I did struggle with getting it to wrap around enough. Um, but you can see the edges, the corners here. You don't have to worry about any sort of pleating or anything like that. It looks just perfectly stretched. 
I hope you love making this. And if you make any of these for the holidays, for yourself or for other people, I hope that, I hope that whoever's using it loves it. Mm. It's still one of my favorite items to make and everybody in my family has one. We all love our spice racks. Alrighty, so what do you guys think? This is so cute. Look at the little puppy on here. I know. Tula pink just gets me. I don't know. Like, whenever I think about making a quilt cotton spice rack, I immediately think Tula pink. Well, yeah, Tula pink. Look at how stinking cute and beautiful this is. And then the inside is so nice. And you can see I did change up the measurements a little bit. This is supposed to be about a quarter of an inch smaller than it is, but it still works really well. I love the shiny vinyl in there. Um, if you're like worried about working with shiny vinyl, this is a great pattern to try it out on because it is such small cuts that if you're like, I, don't, I can't, this is too hard for my machine, then you just change it out with some corks. So if you wanna make this as easy as possible, I do suggest quilt cotton for the exterior and then lining, quilt cotton for the binding, and then cork would be great for the binding on the inside. So where I have this beautiful shiny vinyl, which is also really great. Uh, cork is gonna be a very easy piece of material to sew. So however you make this, I hope you love it. I hope you have a lot of fun making it. That, that, that means a lot to me. I don't know, it means a lot to me. I really, I have fun making it. Um, I have fun using it. I have fun gifting it. And everybody who has one loves it. So I don't know, I couldn't be happier. This is just, I'm so grateful that you guys like it and that you guys make it. I mean, it's one thing if somebody buys the pattern, that's wonderful, it's amazing like that you're interested in it, but I want you guys to actually make this stuff, you know? And so to see you guys making it and then making multiples of them, that just makes me so happy. I, I just, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for all of you. So I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Have a great end of 2023 if you're watching this currently. Uh, 2024, here we go. <laughs> Get out there and make something. Bye guys. Thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope that you are inspired to go make something and have a lot of fun with these patterns. If you're not already subscribed, please make sure you click subscribe down below. Also make sure you hit that little bell, the little notification bell. That's gonna make sure you're notified every single time we have a new video or when we go live. For even more fun content from Oak Roads, make sure you're following us on Facebook and Instagram. We do daily stories over there, which include unboxing, talks about books, other little mini tutorials, lots and lots of discussion over all kinds of things going on. You can also find us on TikTok and also on Reels for even more fun, kind of more random content. And if you really wanna dive in for some behind the scenes content, free gifts, access to shop items before anybody else, and influence on upcoming videos, make sure you go check out Oak Alerts over on Patreon. We have a lot going on over there and it's a fun place to hang out and you are directly supporting the Oak Alerts YouTube channel. These videos could not be possible without the help of my Patreon. So thank you so, so much to everybody over there. Thank you again for watching today's tutorial. I hope you enjoy the videos. Go make something.